Happy 4th of July, my, um... I should come up with a nickname for my audience. You not wanting to watch bad movie people. It's the 4th of July, and you may be wondering, why aren't I doing a patriotic movie for the 4th of July? Fuck you, that's why. I tried last year, and the movie turned out to not be patriotic or even involve America very much. It was kind of weird. For a movie called American Force, there was very little Americans in it. It was very strange, but... Anyhow, this one actually will be more on theme. Uh, I am watching Octopus 2, which the description is, A giant man-eating octopus suddenly appears in the Hudson River during the 4th of July holiday, leaving a trail of dead bodies in its wake. So you see, it takes place during the 4th of July. So I think that makes it appropriate for the 4th of July episode. Um, and really, what's more patriotic than octopi? I like octopi. It, that's a good word. You know what? The English language is seriously, like, one of the worst languages ever. Like, you know, it seems, like, completely, like, random, like, how we're going to decide what words are going to be in plural form. No, it's not octopuses. It's octopi. But people say penises. You don't really say peni. Although, I think probably peni is probably like the... Whatchamacallit thing. The proper term. But, you know, you've got wishes, you've got dishes, but you don't have fishes. What the fuck is up with that? That pisses me off. Like, seriously. Like, how did we decide, like... Yeah, wishes? Dishes? Those are alright. What about fish? Nah, fishes. That, that, what kind of silly word is fishes? No, fish is both singular and plural. And that's why I always say a fuck you to anyone that's like, oh, I'm not going to change my language and, you know, start using they, them as a singular instead of a plural. What the fuck? You think you're all high and mighty? Someone from the 18th century heard you talk. They'd be like, man, this guy butchers the language. Although they would say it in, like, a much more proper, like, condescending tone. But seriously, the language changes, and the English language is stupid to begin with. So, if a person wants me to refer to them as they, them pronouns, I don't care. Whatever. It's, like, really nothing off my ball sack. It takes so little effort. Like, the first couple of times you might be like, ah, eh, that's kind of weird, and then it's like, ah, eh, whatever. They, you know, Ezra Miller... I'm going to talk about them. Oh, it's not that hard. And seriously, it's like, uh, I don't care. Whatever. See, it's not that I'm an enlightened person. It's more of a, I just don't give a fuck type person. So, it's like, eh, it doesn't really affect me. So, if you want to be called Billy Bob Booze Bad Shingabob, and if that's what you want your pronouns to be, I don't care. Whatever. Leave me alone. I've got watch I've got bad movies to watch. Like Octopus 2. Electric Octopus Lou. Yeah, I that joke did not land whatsoever. So like every sea creature based horror movie since Jaws, this starts off with at nighttime, some people are being stupid and decide to go into the water. In this case it's a drunk guy who kind of looks like house. MD. And he's just really drunk. He's like, hey, what's going to be so bad about me, like, going into this little dinghy that's right here? Dinghy, like, a little rowboat. Are they called dinghies? I feel like there's probably are, like, some, like, differentiate between a dinghy and a rowboat. And it might be something minor, or it could be something really huge, because as I think about it, I'm not really fully sure what a dinghy is. It's just fun to say dinghy. But he's all drunk. He's like, ah, I'm going to step in here. Like, because they're in, like, the city. They're, I guess, the Hudson River. I've never been to New York City, so I don't know. But, you know, the description said Hudson River. So I'm guessing, you know, this is the Hudson River. And he's going to get in a little dinghy. And his wife's like, no, don't. I mean, she's older, so I'm assuming she's a wife. But could just be a girlfriend. Could be a sister. Why am I making assumptions? It's not good to presume things. 
But anyways, she's all screaming, no, don't do it. He's like, I'll be fine. And suddenly a tentacle shoots up and grabs him and pulls him underwater. And she's screaming like, no. And the tentacle comes and grabs her. She loses a shoe. I feel like this high heel shoe might come into play. I mean, maybe this is how they know like people have been missing and taken by some sea creature. And also kind of halfway pulls up her dress so that her underwear is showing. I bring that up because I feel like, okay, this is probably like one of those made-for-TV movies so they can't show nudity. So they're like, eh, here's some panties. It's something, right? Oh, and I think there's a homeless guy watching. Someone's watching this happen. And I think he might be homeless, so that's probably going to be like, he tries to tell the police, there's this giant octopus out there killing people. And they're like, Dude, you're fucking homeless, so you know nothing. So now the harbor police are on stakeout. And they see a guy and his woman in a speedboat. It looks like they're fishing. Hmm. Suspicious, because why would anyone be fishing in the Hudson River? Because it's polluted, right? Something? I don't know. People don't like the Hudson River, right? There's something about it. And at night? Whoa. But, you know, because pretty boy detective, he's been keeping an eye on things and apparently you know this boat is on the docks like every other week and you know it's always on a wednesday and then by friday the streets are filled with drugs this guy must be a drug dealer we're gonna catch him so they go underwater in their wetsuits and they swim up i guess to for the element of surprise like whoop hey there you're under arrest you didn't realize we were here because we were underwater. Ha 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 ha. And the guy's like upset. Like, you don't know who you're dealing with. And like, yeah, we do. You've got drugs. And they open up his cooler and there's fish. But, you know, they've got like a little homing beacon. Like, oh, that must be their partner. So let's get back underwater. And they find a cooler down in the bottom. And, and it is fish. Ah, uh, so okay, no drugs, and the next day they're getting chewed out by the head of the water police, which I've decided I'm gonna call them because I can't remember what they're the hydro unit, whatever. And he's like, "Ah, you know who that was? That was the judge, and he was just fishing. Your necks are on the line." So they get put on like detail duty of having to untangle cords underneath the water which i'm guessing you know seems like just a shit job that you're gonna have to do that's not gonna have anything like big or exciting happening i think this is where they discover the octopus i think this is one of those it seems like it's gonna be a boring blase job but there's shit gonna go down and apparently Pretty Boy's partner... Oh, hey, he's planning on retiring because he's too old for this shit or something. He doesn't say that because, you know, the screenwriters are a little bit creative. Or at least realize, okay, too old for this shit. You know, there's been about 500 movies where that line is used. So, one foot out the door. That's not quite as cliched. And the partner says... I'm going to recommend you, young pretty boy, to be the new lead. And young pretty boy's like, why me? I don't have the experience. I don't have seniority. And he's like, but you know what you've got? You've got heart, kid. You're the only one who truly cares about these waters. Everyone else is just here because they think they look cool in a wetsuit. That is an actual line. I know sometimes I paraphrase these things into kind of be funnier. But that was an actual line. He thinks... That the other people there just think that they look cool in a wetsuit. But not young boy, pretty boy. Detective. He's got heart. He is the right man. And I think this uh, untangling cable cords underneath water. That duty is going to show that he is the right man. Because he is going to take down an octopus. And, you know, this is Octopus 2. So I wonder if, like, it's related in any way to the first octopus. You know, the Jaws movies, like, they still had, like, you know, the Brody family, and in addition to that, 
the Sharks family. Which, you know, you can check up because I did Jaws 4 in an earlier episode. And that was the family of the shark that was killed in the first movie was attacking them. So I don't know. This octopus possibly could be related to the octopus from the first octopus movie. But it's irrelevant because I never saw Octopus 1. So Pretty Boy Detective and his partner are swimming underneath the water, passing by some scary-looking fish. But, you know, that's nothing. They're, they're scary-looking, but they're not killer fish. So they're going to go and see what's tangled up and... Oh my god, it's a dead body! It's the girl from earlier, the woman who got killed off the... Um, dock. Dock. Yeah, deck. Dock. From the dock. She got pulled under. And she's all wrapped up along with the little dinghy rowboat. Um, no sign of the guy. But they don't know that there's a guy, right? I don't know, because later, while well, he's giving a report, he says there's two missing people. So, um, yeah, so they must have found the other one, because how would they know that, you know... There was a second victim. So I'm guessing they must have found, like, the other body as well. And, you know, they're bagging it up, and the crime scene guy finds the other high heel shoe in the dock. They're like, huh. You know, we hadn't noticed it before, because this dock is, like, f fucking completely trashed. But, I don't know, I mean, you know, this could have been all just last night, so... There wasn't enough time for them to be like, wow, this dock is trashed, and hey, there's a shoe. And this lady, I thought it was a reporter at first, but she says she's from the mayor's office, and she's asking questions about it because, you know, they think that these are tourists, and, you know, the city has this big, like, uh, event going on with lots of tourists from all over the place. Huh. You know, that sounds kind of familiar, you know. There's going to be a big, like, money-making event with tourists from all over the place coming. And there might be a water monster out there killing people. Just, nah, yeah, no, I can't think of this ever being done in any film, ever. Um, no, it must be a 4th of July event. They didn't say that it was a 4th of July event, they just said it was, like, a big celebration event. And young pretty boy detective seemed like completely caught off guard. Like, oh, there's a event going on. Which, I mean, granted, I guess if it's New York City, there's probably like events always fucking going on. So he wasn't paying attention. Like, oh, yeah, why would there be an event? Um, you know, it's only 4th of July coming up this weekend. So I didn't think that the city would be doing anything to celebrate. And a little kid sees the crest of the octopus just swimming, just slightly above the surface of the water. And he's like, Mommy, there's a monster! And she turns, but Octopus has already gone back underneath the ocean. And she's like, You're a stupid kid. Stop saying there's monsters. So no one's gonna believe the kid that there's a monster. But there is a monster. I saw the crest of it. And I saw the tentacles earlier. I know, I know there's an octopus. So if they ask me, like, I would say, like, yeah, I think this kid's telling the truth that he saw an octopus because I saw it too. Granted, if this were real life, I'd probably be like, yeah, this kid's fucking, like, psycho. No, actually, I probably would. I, someone tells me they saw a monster, I believe them. I, I think the monsters are out there. And the real monsters aren't the creatures in the water. They're the humans. We are the true monsters. Whoa, I'm, a, I'm so deep in philosophical, aren't I? So, pretty boy detective and his partner... You know, they're looking around, and they see an empty bottle of Mad Dog with a very, uh, not typical Mad Dog label, not the American kind. So there was only one place this bottle could have come from. So they go underneath to the sewers, to apparently this part where there's, like, a whole, like, community of homeless people. And granted, I know very little about, like, the homeless community. I don't know if they just, these, like, sewer people... Um, because a lot of it seemed like they were, like, immigrants. <laughs> like, like, Romanian or Russian immigrants. And one guy's playing a violin, and it looks like a very nice violin. And I would think, like, you know, if you're so downtrodden that you're living in the sewers, 
you probably would have pawned the violin by now to get some food. At least I would think. But, you know, it's not my violin, so, you know, it could be a family heirloom. And so, if that case, I probably would be like, no, I can't sell this. I, I can't pawn this even for food because my great Nana, she would be very disappointed in me. And so, but they find one guy who just seems homeless and not an actual immigrant. And he's Mad Dog. He doesn't like being called Mad Dog, but he's Mad Dog because he's got all these bottles of Mad Dog in, like, his little station of the... in his little room in the sewer community. And they all seem empty. So, I don't know. Um, I mean, this film's early 2000s, so... Dude, are you not, like, taking these bottles back to get, like, the nickel? Nick those nickels add up. And it's good for the environment because you're fucking recycling. You're just keeping these Mad Dog bottles? I can understand if he had, like, these bottles that were full of booze. And, I don't know, maybe they make their own Mad Dog, and so he needs to keep the bottles to put them in so that when he goes out into the day world... He has something to drink it out of. Perhaps. I, I don't know. Dude, do your part and recycle, and you get a nickel back. Not like the band nickel back. Um, well, you would want to get nickel back, because then, you know, they might feel bad for you and give you some of their millions and millions of dollars. But so, you know, he tells them what they see, what he's seen, because, you know, they're threatening to just completely destroy all his shit he's like no man no don't do that no 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 don't do that so he tells them i saw an octopus man it was an octopus and of course they don't believe him just like the kid's mom doesn't believe him because what an octopus in the hudson river come on I'm telling you man give it a shot look at it you fucking swim underneath the water anyhow that's part of your job so go and swim and just take a look and see if there is an octopus i'm not saying like put a full blown out like octopus warning just yet you know but do a little covert like just sweeping of the area like uh oh hey there is an octopus there and if there isn't you know you've done your due diligence now there's a boat Going along in the Hudson River, I assume. Everything's in the Hudson River. This film's set in the Hudson River, so... I'm just gonna assume everything that happens in the water happens in the Hudson River. So there's this boat going. And they're playing, like, some Irish folk music. Which is weird, because no one on the boat looks Irish. And I realize that's kind of racist on my part to be like, Oh, well, they don't look Irish. What do I expect Irish people to look like? Leprechauns with red hair? Yes, that is exactly what I expect uh, leprechaun Irish people to look like. And these are not red-headed leprechauns, so I think they're culturally appropriating Irish folk music. But, you know, it doesn't matter, because here comes the octopus! And he gets his tentacles around the boat, and one of the tentacles in through the window to strangle the driver. What? Fuck, what are they? The captain... Do you, who dr actually drives the ship? Like, I mean, you steer a ship, right? So the steerer, -er, maybe? I don't know. I mean, like, there's the captain, and I guess in modern days, like, the captain's the one actually driving the boat. But I always picture, like, you know, the old, like, Seven Seas days. The captain just kind of, like, barked orders. Who was the guy that actually, like, sat at the, like, wheel and, like, stirred and steered the boat. W was it a steer -er, er guy? <laughs> Anyways, the octopus gets that guy and strangles him. And then he just shoots his tentacles all over the place and causes some electrical stuff, and it, the boat explodes. Kaboom! I like that. I like... I like that kaboom. You like my sound effects? Kaboom! And then the news reporter lady, she's telling the story, and she says that guests were treated to an early fireworks display 
She's like, oh, groan. Oh, just... Not the worst I've seen, though. Because, seriously, this did happen uh, at the Channel 4. Buffalo's good old Channel 4. They were reporting on a story about a plane crash. And they transitioned to the weather. Which, I guess to, you know, put it into context, it was winter and it was calling for snow. So the transition from the story about a plane crash to the weather was, speaking of things falling from the sky, like, oof, that was like an actual transition that happened on an actual news station. Like, who, who, like, okayed that? Was that, like, just a a spur of the moment, like, just ad-lib by, yeah, I'll name them Don Postles. Fucking Don Postles. Like, just, what a, just cringy transition, like, oof. Things falling from the sky. Like, oh, like, really? And then, one that was almost as bad... No, yeah, it kind of was as bad, but I can't quite uh, remember what it was transitioning to, but it was a story about this girl that had been killed by a drunk driver, and it was a really big fucking story, because the drunk driver was like this big shot doctor who pretty much helped use his influence to get off and not spend any jail time, like, fucking, like, him, I, him, I won't, uh, yeah, Dr. Corsanti, yeah, th- no, yeah, fuck it, I'm not gonna protect his name, Dr. Dr. Corsanti, Alex Rice, he, or Dr. Corsanti ran over Alex Rice and killed her, and he was drunk, and he, he just got off scot-free, so, like, fuck him fucking rich and powerful people but my point is and I do have a point I think was there was a transition like to some sort of light hearted thing and I think it might have also been like the weather but the graphic they went to was like this cartoon picture of a car dashboard so like you're just got done telling a story about a young girl that got killed by a drunk driver and then, like, your transition is to, like, this cutesy car. Uh, like, I just, uh, I... That was just, uh, horrid. But, so I guess in comparison to that, doing a report of a boat exploding and saying it's an early fireworks display, uh, maybe not that bad. I mean, it's bad, but at least, like, I will say it's realistic. News reporters do stupid shit like that. So, unfortunately, Pretty Boy Detective and his partner don't get this case. Because, <clears throat> you know, they just can't be trusted. I mean, remember, they tried to get the judge, like, arrested for drugs. And Pretty Boy opens up his locker and there's all this ice and fish in there. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You've just been ribbed. Get it? Because you thought it, the thing was having drugs and instead it was fish on ice. Meanwhile, the mayor's watching this news story and he's like really concerned. Like, because, you know, this is this crazy shit's going on and 4th of July weekend's coming up and it's a big celebration and it's going to bring lots of money for the city. Just like Jaws. Dun dun dun, dun dun, da dun, dun, dun dun dun. Yeah, I. This is my uh, own musical collection there. But he's worried, and his assistant comes, and she must have not seen the news yet, because she's trying to go through like all the sorts of assistant things, and apparently, uh, I think like a busload of orphans or something are coming on the way to be part of the celebration. But he tells her, like, oh, don't worry about that now. Get down to the harbor, because shit's going down, and we gotta figure out what's going on. So Pretty Boy Detective spends the night watching some documentaries about octopuses, octopi, and he thinks, you know what? Maybe there is something to this. There was a storm not too long ago. It could have possibly 
swept the octopus up into the Hudson River. Of course, uh, the boss detective guy, he's he doesn't quite buy this. He doesn't think this is right. He thinks that pretty boy detective has lost his marbles. Like, oh no, can't possibly be an octopus in the Hudson River. You're a fucking idiot. Now get back to work. And the mayor's assistant comes down because, you know, she wants to make sure everything's okay because got the big 4th of July celebration coming up. Can't let things go wrong. Can't let an octopus attack kill all the people. Especially those poor little orphans that are coming. Oh, no. What about the orphans? And at least Pretty Boy Detective knows well enough to not espouse his uh, crazy little octopus theory. Like, oh, and just uh, malfunction, bad wiring, something. Yeah, it's just a complete freak accident. Don't worry about it. There's not any monster out there that's going to kill all the people for the 4th of July celebration. Well, apparently they're not orphans. They're just regular children. And unfortunately, the mayor screwed up his plans, so he can't take the orphans, chil or not orphans, but regular children, to their sightseeing, whatever it was. So it's up to the assistant. Or maybe she just was confused on days. Because why would the mayor be doing this anyhow but you know she's yelling at the kids because they're all trying to run off and but there's one girl in the wheelchair who's very grateful for the mayor's assistant because it's the greatest day of her life and now they're gonna get attacked by the octopus right no we see the children for like 30 seconds oh i hope we come back to them later and they're in trouble because now it's nighttime for a 30 second field trip the wheelchair girl. She's going to get it, isn't she? The octopus is going to get her. It's Chekhov's wheelchair. You introduce a wheelchair girl in a horror movie, she's going to be in danger. She has to be. But it's nighttime, and pretty boy detective, and not his normal partner, some other douchebag partner, are on stakeout for something, and they're searching because someone's missing. So the other detective, the one whose name I don't know, and it's not because he's not an important character, but just because I don't give a fuck and I don't bother learning names, he goes underwater and he's searching, and then what does he find? Oh no, it's the giant octopus! And luckily, you know, pretty boy, he hears something, so he jumps into the water too, and he sees, oh no, it is the giant octopus, and the octopus is coming for me, and... He knows he can't do anything right now, so he gets back out of the water, and he gets into, like, there's some construction vehicle vehicles nearby, and that claw digger one, whatever they're called, where, like, the big claw comes down, and it grabs something, and it picks it up. You know the thing, I, you picture in your head, I don't know what they're called. I flunked out of Construction 101. But so he gets the claw digger, and he goes to get the octopus. Even though the octopus is much, much bigger than the claw. But he thinks, you know, at the very least, like, you could probably gouge the octopus. Thrashes the dock, and then leaves. Presumably with the dead <laughs> other detective. Oh boy, are people gonna believe me? Well, surprise, surprise, everyone thinks he's crazy. They even make him do the inkblot test. Which he's got a snappy answer because they ask, like, the psychiatrist asks, what do you see? And he says, an ink blot. Oh, oh boy, oh, oh, yeah. Clever one there, this uh, pretty boy detective. And actually, I think it was his regular partner. I don't know. I was thinking his regular partner looked a lot older. I'm getting, conf I'm getting myself confused. I don't know. One of his partners is dead now, and they think he's crazy, and he hallucinated the octopus thing, but he knows what he saw. And I know what he saw, because I saw it too, but does anyone ask me to corroborate this, these stories about octopi, giant octopi killing people? No! They should ask me. Because, you know, if this happened in real life and someone asked me, you know, I was like... Okay, even if I didn't see it, I'd say it's possible. 
I'm not going to rule out the possibility of a giant octopus in the river killing people. Just, you know, you can't close your mind to possibilities. You got to do due diligence. And you got to search that the side octopus is there. But the mayor's assistant calms down. Um, Top for condolences. He's a little edgy, um, pretty boy detective, because he's like, oh, you probably are just mad because, you know, a detective got killed on the dock the day before the 4th of July celebration, and it's going to ruin everything. And she's like, no, I just honestly feel bad. And also, I want to fuck you. I can see it. I see it in her eyes. She's got the fuck me eyes. She's fucking them. She's eye-fucking him right now. She's mentally undressing him, and I don't blame her. Or maybe she's mentally undressing me. She sees me through the screen. This is, that's what's going on here, isn't it? Isn't it? She, This pretty boy detective is just a stand-in for me. And she really just wants to fuck me. I can't blame her. I would fuck me if it were possible. Now, as Pretty Boy Detective leaves the precinct, there's all these reporters there asking him, you know, was your partner murdered by the something murderer killer who killed the two homeless people? Or wait, no, they weren't homeless. The two tourists killed earlier. And, well, technically, yes, his partner actually was killed by the same killer. Um, he can't go into detail and say, like, yeah, um... My partner was killed by an octopus. So instead, he's like, you vultures. Which, granted, even if he could say it was an octopus, he'd probably still be, like, pissed off that, you know, these reporters are just shoving cameras and microphones into his face while he's still trying to grieve his partner's death. And now it's time for the big 4th of July celebration. And fireworks are going off. And Pretty Boy Detective is inside the Statue of Liberty. Which should be our first tip-off that this is a dream sequence. But no, 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 no. This film is going to really try to play that this isn't a dream sequence and make you think like, oh, this is really happening because the fireworks are going off and then the octopus just comes out of the water and starts climbing up the Statue of Liberty and puts his tentacles around the Statue of Liberty's neck and causes the head to fall off and... Pretty Boy Detective goes flying, and he's yelling, like, Aah! Like, no, seriously, like, it was that, like, girly. While he's falling, and the green screen behind him shows the Statue of Liberty's falling with him. Uh, no! Oh! And he wakes up. It was just all a nightmare. Whew! You know, I was worried. I did not in any way absolutely 100% saw that coming. Now, one of the other detectives, the dickhead detective, did I mention the dickhead detective? The, 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 yeah. Ah, fucking alliteration gets me every time, doesn't it? The dickhead detective, one of the ones that made fun of him for the whole fish, not drugs scandal earlier. But anyways, he's uh, wanting to make amends with the pretty boy detective because he's got a lead on the case of the killed tourist. You know, the ones that have been killed by an octopus, but no one will believe it. Because the credit card of the woman has been used downtown. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. So they track down the lead, and they go to the hotel where it's been last used. It's a seedy hotel full of prostitutes. Ooh, yucky, yucky, prostitutes, go away, go away. We don't want you here. We're a clean city now. And they go to the room that it's been used for, and in there is Mad Dog! Remember Mad Dog? The little homeless guy, the only other person who's seen the octopus and believes the Wait, no, that's not true. There's that little kid. That little kid also saw the octopus. And no one believes him either. But Mad Dog, he... He must have just gotten the person who was like, Hey, let me uh sleep in a real room for once. Fuck being homeless. I'm going to steal this lady's credit card. Which, you know, isn't good. It is illegal, so they are right to take them in to custody. Because, you know, it is theft. It is still theft. But, pretty boy detective. 
He knows that it wasn't Mad Dog who killed them. He's still on the octopus hunch. But everyone else thinks, duh. Case solved. We found the killer. And the harbor's gonna be safe for the big 4th of July party. woo And uh, police chief, he's like, uh, telling the reporters, like, it's all solved. It's safe. I stake my reputation. I stake the police precinct's reputation. Oh, those words are gonna come back to kick him in the ass. Because... That octopus is still out there! Now, this police officer, one that I'm pretty sure I've never seen before, is uh, investigating down in the water in... I don't know, I think where electrical stuff goes. I don't know. Some sub-basement official place for the harbor police or whatever. I, I don't know. It's underwater. Well, it's not quite underwater, but it's near the water. There's water all o all around, and he gets attacked by the octopus! And he's dead. Poor, poor, unnamed security guard or police officer. I'm not sure which he was. So, Pretty Boy Detective the next day is talking to the mayor's assistant, because they are so going to bang. Uh, he's taking her out to lunch to have a hot dog at the hot dog cart. And he's telling her about, yo, there's these, well, not these, but one fucking octopus. Maybe there's more than one. We don't know for sure. But there's one, there's at least one octopus out there killing people. You know, it wasn't Mad Dog. Mad Dog didn't kill anyone. There's octopus. And we need to do something. We need to tell the mayor so we can prevent tragedies from going on. And, of course, she's skeptical, because, remember, Pretty Boy Detective did think he had a big drug bust that turned out to be a judge fishing. Oh, how are you going to explain to the mayor, like, oh, hey, remember that guy that uh, thought the judge was a drug trafficker? Oh, he thinks there's an octopus out there. And, obviously, the mayor's not going to be, like, too keen on the idea, like, oh, yeah, right. But somehow, some way, he convinces her. A pretty boy detective convinces the assistant. I don't know how. She's very skeptical, but she's, I guess, decided, you know, she's going to do her due diligence and bring it up to the mayor. However, the mayor's too busy to talk. And she's not even going to try any further. She tried to talk, and he's, like, just too busy, and, you know, his entire staff's there, so she didn't want to say it in front of them, because... You know, they would all laugh at her. Because she knows how ridiculous it would sound. Like, hey, there's a giant octopus out there killing people. But she still believes. She believes in the pretty boy detective. Or at least believes in his cock. I don't know. One or the other. So they decide that night they're going to do their own investigating. At the harbor. In the same, like, underground part. Um, Because pretty boy's like, you know... There's an attack every night for the past few nights in this area, so let's just recklessly go investigate. And they find the dead body of the guard from the previous night. Like, oh no, he's dead. And then the octopus attacks. It grabs the mayor's assistant and starts choking her. And thankfully, pretty boy starts punching the tentacle and it lets go and they run as fast as they can and they're climbing up the ladder, but the octopus grabs the tentacle er, doesn't grab the tentacle his tentacle grabs the leg of the pretty boy detective and pretty boy's like taking out his gun and starts shooting it and it hurts the octopus so the octopus lets go and makes some sort of squeal like squeal I'm hurt I'm an octopus um I'm guessing more or less that's probably the mindset of the octopus during this whole fiasco but Luckily for Pretty Boy Detective, he now has a witness. Someone else knows that there's a giant octopus. So will they be willing to believe her? Or are they going to be like, she's a woman. Obviously, she's only going along with this because she wants his cock. Which, I, I don't know. I mean, it's possible. I mean, she does want his cock. I, I do not deny that. But I think uh, I think she's fully capable of 
knowing her own, like, forming her own opinions and being able to think things out. And I don't think that she would lie about an octopus just because she wants some cock. Plus, I just saw her see an octopus. So, I know for sure that it's not purely... Like, the wanting the cock is probably what got her to, you know, go with him in the first place. But she's seen the octopus. So, yeah. There's an octopus. I can understand if there's one person saying there's an octopus. And granted, there's two people. But one of them's a crazy homeless guy. So, yeah, he gets disqualified. But, you know, so you got one person saying that there's an octopus and you could be like, ah, he might be a little crazy. But if you've got two people saying there's an octopus, then you better believe that it's an octopus. It's out there. Go get the octopus. Since Pretty Boy now has corroborating witnesses, well, one corroborating witness that wants his cock, so she's a little suspect. He goes to his chief and is like, Look, look, we got attacked by an octopus. A giant fucking octopus. So the chief calls the mayor, and the mayor's like, Oh, you guys pulling my leg or something? You guys just are trying to drive up your police budget or some crap. This is all bullshit. And the police chief's like, Well, you know, I don't fully believe them, because, you know, this guy's the dum-dum. No, he didn't actually say dum-dum, but, you know... Because Pretty Boy, he still has that uh, attempting to arrest a judge on his record. So, you know, we don't fully believe him. But, you know, police chief's like, you know, there's a lot of fucking damage and I've got two dead guys. So, I know something's going to probably happen. The 4th of July party tomorrow. So, I'm doubling down on duty. Something's going down. Mayor's a little uh, suspect. But he's going to go ahead with the party. Those mayors. You know, if I were mayor and someone told me there's a giant sea creature about to attack, I've watched enough movies to know, okay, let's do something about it. Do your due diligence and find this fucking sea creature. So it's 4th of July now and the clock is ticking. They got to find this octopus. They talk to some sea scientist or something. And even he's got the goal of, like, a giant octopus, at least, you know, of the big size that they're claiming. But he is a man of science, so even though he has healthy skepticism, that's not going to stop him from trying to get down to the root of the matter and the truth. Because, as people say, questioning science is how you science. Except, you know, you question science with better science, not just with, I don't like this science. Anyhow, he's not questioning the science. He's saying, like, okay, it's possible. So he does some scientific data logging and tribulations and calculations and whatever. And he figures out, okay, this is probably where the octopus is. And so Pretty Boy Detective and Douchebag Detective, who I guess is now his new partner, go down to where the scientists suggest. And there's a boat. It's the judge's boat. Remember the judge that Pretty Boy thought was dealing drugs? But the judge isn't there, just his wife, who said that the octopus has gotten him. And they go down in the water. They put on their scuba gear and dive in, and they see the octopus. And luckily, the octopus doesn't attack or whatever leaves. So they're safe. They're not dead. But some more corroborating witnesses. The octopus is out there. And the scientist does some more whatever he does to figure it out. And they think the octopus's lair is in the middle of the Hudson River. And they call the mayor like, Mayor, you got to do something. We probably are going to have to call off this 4th of July celebration because there's a giant fucking octopus out there. The mayor's like, no, we are not letting this get out. And we're going on with proceedings as planned. Like, dude. Okay, I get that, you know, it's probably going to cause, like, a lot of mass fucking hysteria to announce that there's, like, a giant octopus on the loose. But think about if the giant octopus on the loose attacks during the 4th of July celebration. That is going to be much worse. You got to weigh things out here. And, you know, you've got now got several people 
telling you there's a giant octopus. You do something. Throw some dynamite into the Hudson River and blow up everything that's living in there. At least that's, you know, what I'd do. Um, this is why I still have not been elected mayor. Is That actually was my campaign when I ran for mayor. Was I'm going to throw dynamite into the river and blow shit up. I didn't even know that there'd be, like, a giant octopus. It wasn't even part of the plan of, like, oh, you know, because I'm going to destroy some monster or something. It was just, I'm just going to throw dynamite in the river and blow shit up. Um, did did get a good number of votes, though. So I think that I, if you tweak it, that might be a good campaign. If you're planning on running for office. Clock is ticking. Team of divers led by Pretty Boy Detective and Douchebag Detective go into water because they're going to hunt this octopus down. They're going to kill it before it has a chance to kill anyone. And so they go and they find the octopus and they're fighting with the octopus and the octopus kills some of like the non-important members, the ones we have never been introduced to. You know, it's never a good sign when you go on a team to fight a monster and you don't get introduced. You're dead. You're, You're the expendable one. Meanwhile, this is all being intercut with the scene of the school bus with the not orphans being taken to the big celebration, even though it looks like the celebration is still going on. I don't know what's going on, because when the school bus left, and I'm not sure where they were leaving from, it was daytime, and they're still driving, and it's nighttime now. And, I mean, it's July, so, you know, it would get dark probably like eight or nine and i was thinking like okay maybe because now they're traveling under a tunnel so maybe it's just dark under the tunnel but every time they like cut to like the outside world it's dark so they're traveling at nighttime like you think the school but like how far away is i'll admit i've never been to new york city so i have no concept of just how fucking large new york city is And maybe it does take, like, five hours to get from one area to another. I don't know. Could be. Traffic didn't look that bad. Um, But the bus driver kind of looks like Tom Morello. So I just want him, like, just get out a guitar to bust out some tunes. But he's getting mad because he's stuck behind, like, this little old lady driving. Who's got her dog, and she's not very old. She's, like, pretend old. It is very, like, just cliched, like, Oh, my dog! Uh, Why do I have to drive? And she's probably, like, actually 30, pretending to be, like, an 80-year-old. But, so back to the fight with the octopus. And it's killed a couple of the guys, maybe several of them. I can't quite tell what's going on. And they shoot, like, a dynamite thing at the octopus. Doesn't kill the octopus, but it causes enough vibration that it rattles the tunnel. Because, I guess, like, are they right underneath the tunnel? I'm not, I don't know what really happened. But the tunnel starts shaking and some bricks fall and kill the old lady driving the car. Which causes the bus to stop suddenly. And this car that was behind them tries to spin around aside from them I I don't know if like the car just decided like I'm not gonna stop I'm gonna go around you and in doing so flipped over I I don't know I mean I guess like whoa whoa I'm not I don't want to crash into this bus so let me just try to go around it and oops I flipped over it happens to all of us and meanwhile the fireworks are going off because the fireworks display has started. Happy 4th of July. There's still an octopus we have to kill and some children to save. So battling with the octopus and Pretty Boy Detective managed to strap a bomb to the octopus and gets away in time and kaboom! The octopus is dead, we assume. We just kind of see some bad CGI explosions and we assume the octopus is dead and Pretty boy detective, you know, tells Chief, Octopus is vaporized! woo But, oh, bit of a problem. The tunnel. Because <coughs> all of this, you know, thrashing about by the octopus and the explosions has caused the tunnel to pretty much collapse, and now it's flooding. 
And unfortunately, no one thought to, you know, close off the tunnel. Because that would have caused panic, you know. Because, you know, we're trying to keep it on the DL of, you know, there's a giant octopus that we have to kill. So all these people in the tunnel, they're now trapped. And most of them seem dead, except for, like, the school bus. Thankfully, the all the children are still alive. And Tom Morello and the mayor's assistant who were there, they're still alive. And apparently the old lady is still alive. She's just, you know, kind of bleeding from her head, but she's alive. And luckily, Pretty Boy Detective shows up, and he's going to rescue them. And, you know, again, the clock is ticking because the water's filling up. And they're getting them... I, you know what, I'm not even sure what the plan is. Because uh, he tells them all to get to the back of the bus, and then they start going out the back of the bus, and... They're going to get them to safety somehow. Um, movie reasons! Fireworks are going off while everyone's celebrating. The people, you know, who are completely oblivious to the octopus situation going... They're the ones celebrating. Meanwhile, the people from the tunnel, which, again, is just the old lady and the kids, they're climbing up the ladder. They've gotten up to, like, that ladder by the side, and they're climbing up the ladder to get to safety. But can they get to safety before the tunnel completely collapses? And now explosions are going off. And they're getting up there. But remember, there's the one girl in the wheelchair. How is she going to climb the ladder? Prey Boy Detective puts her on his back. And he's going to climb up there. But can they make it in time? Starting to explode. And yes, they make it. Everyone's out alive. Glory, hallelujah, happy 4th of July. And whoa, what's that? The octopus is back! The octopus did not get blown up by the bomb. How? How? Uh, at least if maybe it was at least damaged, it doesn't look damaged. And they shoot like a fire arrow bomb at it. And that does it. And that kills it. Theoretically. Why are you celebrating now? You guys thought you blew up the octopus before and it didn't work. So why did this explosion? You're going to just assume, uh, no, that one definitely has to work. Because I'm pretty sure that's like the third or fourth bomb you've thrown at it to blow it up. And each time you thought like, oh, Ray, we blew it up. And oh, no, he's still alive. You check the scene now and find that fucker's corpse before you celebrate. Although the explosions are kind of fun because it's obvious, like, stock footage of, like, water explosions in water. And I think some of it might just be from, like, a Godzilla film. But, yeah, but still, you see explosions in the water. Don't assume the octopi is dead. I'm saying octopi because who knows? Maybe there was a second octopus. That happens in some of these movies. And roll credits. Wait. We're, we're rolling credits. No sort of resolution? Wrap-up? Um, you know, no good job, Pretty Boy Detective. You were right about the octopus, and thank you for saving us. No, hey, let's make sure that the octopus is dead. No, you know, response from the people who are just there celebrating, like, Whoa, hold on, what the fuck? There was a giant octopus and no one told us we could have been killed? We were here celebrating watching the fireworks, and there was an octopus? No, like, no, nothing. No hookup between Pretty Boy Detective and the mayor's assistant. I mean, we know it's going to happen because we saw all along that she wanted his cock. And so it, it's going to happen. But nothing. You're just going to end like that? Why? Oh, boy. I wonder if there's any, like, further octopus sequels. I hope there's an octopus the revenge, where the family of that octopus tracks down the children of Pretty Boy Detective and the mayor's assistant, if they're not still alive. The octopus is just like, this time it's personal. So why not? You rip so much off from Jaws. Rip off the sequels as well. And, you know... You probably can't afford Michael Caine, but if you get enough money to buy him a house, he will be in Octopus 4, The Revenge. And 
I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July. Or had a wonderful 4th of July if you're listening to this at some point after 4th of July. And hopefully you were not attacked by any octopi. Or any other type of giant sea creatures. So, I celebrate you. And I love you guys. Till next time. And I want to thank the Living Brain Dead for providing the official theme song for Velvet Owl Watches Movies So You Don't Have To. It's called Never Fuck With Cat Girls. And you can get it at livingbraindead.com, which you should totally do. They are not paying me for this, so I shield them out of my love for the music. <laughs>